You know, Intel just can't help themselves, I'm convinced. You'd think after all the rough years they've had, they would have learned by now to get their naming conventions and marketing terms right with their processor classes. So much so that a couple years back, I actually made a detailed video simplifying what all the core i-series processors were about and which one is right for you. That video is still up if you want to learn about those processors, but literally a year after that, they table flipped everything and said, here's the new Core Ultra series. In case you weren't confused, now you'll definitely be confused because my goodness, is this a messy affair fair. Thankfully for you guys, I've taken it upon myself to once again condense all that information and simplify it so you know exactly what Intel's new Core Ultra series is all about, which processor might be right for you, and all the little nitty gritty details. But at the same time, I'll keep things very simple. I won't get into a lot of technical stuff and I'll keep it as layman as possible so you have a good idea of, again, which processor is right for your needs. As always, guys, these videos are excruciatingly painful and difficult to make because I have to take all this technical detail and condense it in a simple manner. So if you find this video to be useful, a like and a sub would go a long way. Thank you so much for your viewership. Let's carry on. By the way, guys, this is a long video. So if you want to skip to any specific portion, and learn exactly about a certain area, feel free to use the chapters below for that. A couple of quick caveats to keep in mind. Firstly, this is a video geared towards laptop processors. So it's not going to cover desktop core ultra series processors. The two are loosely connected, but way different when you think of them as processors. At the same time, keep in mind that Intel constantly changes things up as you've clearly seen. So this video might be entirely irrelevant three or four years from now if you're watching it that long down the road. And thirdly, each generation Intel releases is often better and different than the previous generation. So some elements that I talk about from a technical perspective might be different by the time you watch them. So keep that in your considerations as well. Some quick pre-context on Core Ultra processors altogether. So essentially, Intel's Core Ultra subbrand is supposed to replace Intel's Core i-series processors. And to a good extent, it has, though ironically, you can still find 14th generation Core i-series processors lingering around with a lot of gaming laptops. Nonetheless, Intel's Core Ultra series laptops currently has Core Ultra 5, Core Ultra 7, and Core Ultra 9 processors for laptops. Inevitably, I'm sure Core Ultra 3 will be introduced for laptops as well. However, at the time of this video, it hasn't officially been announced. Regardless, it's worth noting that not all Intel Core Ultra processors are the same. In fact, you basically have two power bands. So you have high efficiency Intel Core Ultra processors, also part of their V series. So any processor model that ends with the letter V is part of the high efficiency Core Ultra processor lineup. And these are targeted towards slim laptops or portable laptops or productivity laptops. They tend to prioritize battery life and efficiency over performance. And then we're gonna inevitably also see the rollout of Arrow Lake based laptops, which basically basically have Intel's H series processor, which by the way, are high performance laptops and they'll of course end with the letter H with any model where they're relevant. And these are designed for gaming laptops, creator laptops, developer laptops, where you need a lot more performance at some degree of sacrificing efficiency. All Intel Core Ultra processors, however, do share three similar traits. Firstly, there's a great focus on efficiency. So they're designed to deliver far better battery life than previous generations, which has been the case. Often Core Ultra models will deliver twice as long battery life compared to previous generations. They're also designed to be more power efficient, which means they produce less heat and thereby perform better, which is something we've seen in our recent reviews as well. And finally, there's a focus on AI, of course. So Intel Core Ultra processors have something called a NPU or a neural processing unit, which is basically a sub chip within the main chip designed to kind of accelerate AI driven tasks on software. So if you are using AI, you'll find it beneficial. Otherwise, it's just going to be a gimmicky term for you. All right, so for the breakdown, I'm going to focus on Intel's V-series processors, which again, a reminder, are part of their high efficiency processor lineup. And current generation is codenamed Lunar Lake, explicitly again for laptops. Now at the very bottom of the barrel, currently we have Intel's Core Ultra 5 processor. Now it features eight physical cores, half of those are performance cores and half of those are efficiency cores. Additionally, Intel's Core Ultra 5 processor has a built-in integrated graphics unit called Intel's Arc Graphics and it's pretty useful. Now, this thing is a high-end productivity processor. It can do everything from surfing the web to watching 4K content online. You can even do photo editing on here. You can actually do full HD video editing comfortably without a lot of issues and some great performance overall. It's great for programming and code compilation, and it can even to an extent do light graphically intensive activities like casual gaming. So games like Fortnite can comfortably run at 60 frames per second, often higher at medium settings. 
things. And you can even do a little bit of light studio animation work or 3D designing work as well, making the Core Ultra 5 a pretty impressive chip while giving you some exceptional battery life, often north of 15 hours on a single charge. The next tier up is Intel's Core Ultra 7 processor within the Lunar Lake world. This processor also has exactly the same core count at 8 physical cores and the same split at 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. There's a couple of key differences, however. Intel's Core Ultra 7 devices, or processors, sorry, tend to actually work at faster clock speeds. Additionally, they have a more powerful version of Intel's Arc graphics, the 140V variant, and they have a larger system cache, or processor cache, which means there's more information stored directly on the processor, allowing for quicker task execution. The result is that it can do everything Core Ultra 5 can, but it's a little bit more improved in terms of general performance. For example, you can now work with larger picture files when photo editing with less performance hurdles. Same thing with video editing, you'll be able to work with 4K files instead of 1080p before you notice any sort of performance drops, which can make quite a bit of difference, even if it is subtle otherwise. And of course, you can run more complex programming and so forth. Also, because you have a little bit more graphical horsepower, you're able to do casual gaming at a slightly higher level. So you can probably push up the setting a little bit, get slightly better frame rates as we've seen in some of our reviews with Core Ultra 7 chips and of course you'll also be able to push the 3d boundaries a little further so do a little bit more 3d designing kind of work before you run into again performance limitations at the very top of the spectrum with the Lunar Lake or V-Series chips, you have Intel's Core Ultra 9 processors. Now, there's a few differences with the Core Ultra 9 processor. Sure, they have the exact same physical processor core count as the 7 and 5 models at 8 with the same split of 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores. However, the biggest difference is that the base power output is set at 30 watts versus 17 watts for the other two processors. This literally means more raw processing power is capable on the processor because more literal energy is being pumped into it. The result is it runs at even higher clock speeds, is able to perform a lot of tasks way faster and in more quantities at a time, which means that you can now run far more complex coding, for example, or if you're learning a machine learning or LLM environment, you'll have a much better chance of working with that without any performance hiccups. You can now render complex, large 4K files, do color grading, and all that fun stuff without seeing, again, a lot of performance hiccups, something that wouldn't be possible with the lower wattage chips. Now, keep in mind, for the vast majority of consumers, Core Ultra 9 chips are going to be entirely useless. Your use case probably won't go above a Core Ultra 5 chip if you're looking for a general productivity device. However, if you need that extra power while still keeping some pretty impressive efficiency, Core Ultra 9 chips are the way to go. And because they're part of the V-Series chip, it means you get some pretty good battery life without compromising too much on performance. We're almost there, guys. Now, remember how I mentioned not all Core Ultra processors are the same in terms of their power band? So just now, I talked about Lunar Lake or V-Series chips, which are ultra-efficiency chips. The other side of the spectrum, you're also going to have H-Series chips, the current generation being codenamed Arrow Lake processors. And these laptop processors usually have more physical cores. They'll have a higher wattage count. They'll have the ability to hyper-thread. All these things mean they perform a lot better than the V-Series counterpart. And they're designed for heavy-duty activities like gaming laptops, creator laptops, or development work, for example, which also means they're not as efficient as your V-series counterpart and thereby use more battery life and probably produce more heat as well as a result. Now, with all that in mind, keep in mind that a Core Ultra 5 H-series chip is not the same as a Core Ultra 5 V-series chip, totally different, and you shouldn't compare them apples to apple. However, the same logic does apply where a Core Ultra 7 chip in the H-series is going to be more powerful than an H-series Core Ultra 5 chip and then so forth with the Core Ultra 9 H-series chip. That was a lot of context. If you guys actually made it through the entire video, kudos to you. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit better informed than you were when you started the video and hopefully things are a lot more simple than Intel made them in the first place. Now with that said, a quick recap. Keep in mind, Intel's Core Ultra series is a natural successor to the Core i series that we saw in the past. You can learn about that. I'll leave a link to that in the video description below. Also, essentially within the laptop world, we're going to have V-series processors and H-series processors. V-series are ultra-efficient chips designed with a greater focus on battery life and lower thermals, while H-series processors 
are going to have a greater focus on power and performance. And they shouldn't be directly compared to each other. You should only really compare a Core Ultra 5 H series chip to another H series product. And same thing for V series because again, different workflows. Also, all the processors we covered in this video are explicitly once being used in laptops. While desktop processors do share a similar naming convention, they're an entirely different animal. We make a video on Intel Core Ultra processor for desktop if there's demand for it. I also want to mention that as newer processors come, a lot of the information in this video will eventually become outdated. And keep in mind that a newer generation Core Ultra 5 processor might actually be faster than a current generation Core Ultra 7 processor we have right now. I have a video explaining generations as well. It's a great concept you should take the time to learn about, can help save you a lot of money. I'll leave a link to that somewhere in the video description below as well for your convenience. As always guys, you know, these videos are hard to make. If you enjoyed the content, please consider subscribing to this channel and liking this video. It genuinely means a lot to me. It makes all this hard work worth it. Thank you so much for your viewership. Again, if you have any questions, put them in the comment section below. Me or someone else will do their best to get back to you. See you in the next one.